All right, guys, seriously, in the interest of time, I'll get right to your questions. Um, really, really talented opponent in Southern Cal. Uh, we've got a huge, a huge challenge in front of us, one that we're excited about uh, taking, taking on. So, We've uh, – injuries obviously have been a big part of the season, but um, is it, are they just football, or is there one thing you could point to, whether that's strength and conditioning, the medical staff, any processes you guys have done in the preseason that you think are you know, leading to this? No, it's a very physical game, football. People wear these hard helmets, and they wear these hard plastic pads, and they're really strong. The strength and conditioning uh, gets them really big and strong and fast, and then they run full speed into each other, and sometimes that hurts them. Sometimes they're so strong that when they go to stop, their ligaments and stuff aren't as strong as their, their muscles, right? and they tear a ligament. But, yeah, no, there's no blame. There's no uh, conspiracy theory that somebody put something in their Wheaties. It's just that's the way it is. Some years you're, you're fortunate with injuries, some years you're not. But the reality is, and this is the reality that our team has to understand and that the coaching staff has to understand, and I certainly understand, is nobody cares. Nobody cares if you have 20 injuries or five. It doesn't matter. So talking about them, I love that we have the availability report because now I don't have to talk about them. I just say it's in the availability report. So I like that. Uh, other than that, I have to deal with it, and I meet with my trainers and my medical and strength and high performance every single day. It's all we talk about as the players. We'll see. You know, we'll see who the 74 are they get on the plane. That's a challenge too, right? If you have a guy that you don't know, we leave Wednesday. You don't know if he's going to be ready to play on Friday or not. you got to make a decision. Do you take him or do you take somebody else? You may say, well, 74, coach. Well, if you start looking at all the special teams and all the guys that can maybe play 15 plays, it adds up quickly. So, um my issue is not yours. Uh, just with the short week, obviously that throws a little wrench in things from a preparation standpoint. But going cross country, um, playing a really late kickoff game, um, have you changed anything else from a preparation standpoint? We have, without getting into all our schedule and all that stuff. We generally never go out a day early. Um, just we stay on Rutgers time. But when you have a nine, when you have a eight o'clock start Pacific, I don't think it's prudent to stay on Rutgers time. Now, we've done it in the NFL. We've done it in college. We've done it everywhere. It's, it's really served us well. Um, the times that we went out early on other teams that I coached on, I don't think it served us well. Uh, but we have no choice in this matter. I guess you have a choice. But at 2.30 in the morning, hopefully the game is on the line. And I don't like my decision-making at 2.30, and I don't, I don't really like our players' decision-making at 2.30 either. So we'll go out early, and we'll have some stuff out there on Thursday. You know, we'll get out there Wednesday night, do some stuff there Thursday, and then go play the game Friday and come home right after the game. Following the game, you ended the press conference talking about your optimism of the direction of the program and where things were going. And Sometimes fans don't always want to hear that, right, in the moment. But what leads to your level of optimism and what are you seeing? And is it optimism for this season or moving forward? No, it's optimism for that night, right? It didn't go the way we wanted on the field, but I know how the coaches are approaching it. I know how our players are approaching it. It didn't happen. And I totally understand. Again, it's a long-suffering fan base. I get that. So every time they get a little, ah, they, you know, and then it doesn't exactly happen, it'll happen. That was my point. It's just hang in there. It's going to happen. It didn't happen overnight the first time. It's not happening overnight this time. It will happen. I go out to practice every day. I see them train year-round. I see our coaches the way they work. It'll happen. Will it be a linear ascent? No, it won't. But that's the confidence. It's not an arrogance. It's not a defiance. It literally is. I see it. So it's a great question because hopefully that will get to some people that are a little concerned. Right? I said the sky is falling. I don't mean to be sarcastic. That's not my, my attempt. My attempt is to literally explain why. There's some things going on right now that are not under our control. And you have to live with what you live with. I made it very clear that it's my decision I made the decision to play some people that maybe weren't hundred percent thinking that they were better than someone else that you know was at 80 percent I have to reconsider that I may play the exact same people if they're able I don't know that that's what today this week's practice is about but as as you mentioned right I mean it's a shorter week you're not going to have the exposures so we'll fi we'll figure it out by Wednesday when we get on that plane though there's only 74 guys that can get on and I got to make sure we have the right 74 so then we can make the right choices who the right 11 are and uh, throw on top of that a really really talented team 
that's got their back against the wall as well, right? So, like, we both probably have very similar uh, feelings about what we have to do uh, Friday night. Should make for a great game. Really respect um, everything they do out there. They're really a, a, a complete program. You know, Coach does a great job. Just kind of off of that, what do you uh, see from that USC offense on film? Ooh, talented is all get out. Um, they have speed and athleticism at the receiver. They have a young or inexperienced but very, very talented quarterback. Um, you know, he's rolling up the cash register as far as numbers go. Uh, the running back situation, really strong. They have their lead guy like we do, and then they have a, a, a guy that spells them. Uh, and then the offensive line is gigantic. So, yeah, it's typical SC, what you would expect from an SC football team. And then you throw on top of it, they're so well coached. You know, you can see all the years of Coach Riley's mindset come into his play. I remember going against him back when I was at Ohio State in 2016, and we were playing Oklahoma, and uh, he was the O.C., and you see a lot of the same stuff, but you see how he's evolved over the years to, to this year, you know, to this time. I just think they're really well coached. Um, schematically, they present as many issues as anybody we play all year. Obviously, a, a win is the main goal, but short week, late game, like you said, L.A. Coliseum, national TV at USC. What makes you get on that plane on the way home and feel satisfied or proud no matter what the final score is? No win. Yeah, you hit it. The win is we're, we're not we're not here to you know play well or compete. Like we're here to win, and when we don't win, there needs to be an examination. We need to we need to make at least a, an assessment of why that didn't happen. You know, the goal is to have one more point than they do. And I say this to to the team. I say this to people when I speak. In in our business, they have this huge, humongous thing in the end zones, right, with all these lights. And they have our name and they have the other team's name. And if their number's bigger than ours, we didn't get it done. That's as simple as you can get. Now, there's a lot of things that go into that. But at the end of the day, that is the goal. You know, there's a lot of purposes I have other than that. But the goal, you ask what the goal is, the goal is to win the game. What's your assessment of the way that your young, your young linebackers have played, especially Abram, Moses, and uh, DJ? Really, really well at times, and then not so well at other times. So we were, we've been inconsistent. But what do you expect from guys that don't have a lot of snaps under their belt? Now we're at week, we're going into week eight. So I think that got to stop being a, a, a you know a reason. Um, definitely talented guys that we just need to we need to become more consistent. It's not an easy position to play. I think it's the hardest position on defense because you have to fit the runs against people that are much bigger than you. You also have to play the pass against people that are faster than you. So it's a disadvantaged life. And I played it, so I know. This 30-inch inseam didn't cover a lot of ground. We'll go right down the line to finish here. Every game is important. You guys want to win every game, obviously. Is this game a little bit more important in the sense that if you win, you don't have a four-game losing streak, entering a bye week, feeling better going into the bye week? You're getting, this, you're getting worse than I am, dude. With the with the lead into the question, right? Like I know everything. I know, you know. Well, I get that. I get the preface. I do. I get it. Um, I don't even think about that. I have, you know, the bye week. In my mind, you say bye week. I I think about development and recruiting. That's all I think about. So I don't think about. Oh, it'd be nice to. No, that that quite honestly never enters my mind. It might enter somebody's, but not mine. What have you just made of USC's inability to finish games? So losing a couple of things down the stretch. Um, what, what have you seen in those critical situations? Yeah, I mean, again, you can look at it two ways. Like, I know you always look at it from the way you're looking at it. I get that. I try to step back and look at it as there's two teams playing. And my grandmother told me a long time ago, I used to get very upset when my favorite teams in sports lost, you know, when the Yankees or the Mets or the Giants. Or, I'd cry as a little kid. I was like a maniac. That was uh, what the word fan is short for, fanatic, right? And she used to tell me, Gregory, half the teams are going to lose. That's a fact. And I'll never forget that. So, yeah, I, I think I think that uh, they're really good. We have to go out there and play our very best football, and there are extenuating circumstances. Too bad, right? You, you do the best with what you have at the time, you know, I have a saying, when the foot hits the ball, right? It'll be 8-0 something when the foot hits the ball. And that's when you have to be ready. 
do what you're supposed to do when, when you're supposed to do it. Well, that's when we're supposed to do it, at 8.06 or 8.04, whatever that time is. We got to play. And in three and a half or four hours, that board will tell us how we did. That's what I love about this profession. That's what I love about this game. Sometimes it can be cruel. Yeah, last couple Saturdays it's been cruel. But it'll get good again. I had another question lined up, but taking grandma's advice, how do you do that now when you go through these moments and these difficult patches? Oh, the way I always, the way I've always done it. You know, you go back to work. Um, you certainly get frustrated, right? Everybody's human. But my job isn't to get frustrated. My job is to come up with answers for my staff, right? Listen to them and then help them come up with answers. My players, listen to them, help them come up with answers. Because the one thing that I've always told teams, coaches, businesses, unless you have a really bad person in your, in your organization, there's not one person that says in the morning, you know what, I'm going to go in there and try to screw it up as much as I can and see if we can't get a, get a big fat L on the record. Right? Now, are there things they do that I have to recognize and say, you know what, this guy's not – handling his business well enough we can't entrust him with repetitions or this guy is really a trust guy we gotta we gotta get him more reps if, if there was one job during the season that I have as a head coach it's to assess where we are now and who deserves the reps because who gets the reps in practice is who's going to play in the game that's why the saying practice is everything again this is the only game where you practice a heck of a lot more than you play games so practice is everything. So the repetitions you get in practice are critical to the success on game day. And that's what I have to evaluate. The problem, not the problem, the secret is oftentimes on Tuesday, not Monday because today, but today's a Tuesday to us. Tuesday and Wednesday, you don't have a real clear picture of how they're going to be on Saturday. And experienced medical people, you know, to your point, experienced high performance people, they do a great job of predicting. Coach, I think we can have them at 80%. Well, then I can make a decision. I got to look at it and weigh it out. But that's, you know, I, I don't ever have sleepless nights. I mean, a lot of coaches I hear, they can't sleep. I am so exhausted. And my head hits the pillow. I am out. But the thing that I think about in my waking moments and sometimes dream about is, all right, who do we play? Who gets the reps in practice? And that's a huge part of my job. Um, and try to do it the best you can. That's, what, that's how I get through it. I do everything I can as well as I can, and then I sleep well at night because I know that's the true definition of success, right? And Coach Wooden used to say it. The peace of mind you have when you know you've done everything you can to be the best you can be. What else can you do? You know, that's the way I look at it. So I know that frustrates some, right? Thank God it frustrates people. That means I'm doing something good. Thanks, guys. Thank